In this tutorial, we're going to run through the techniques used in this little sweater. It is called a Sissy Swing Coat by Lovecraft's Knitting. And we can go ahead and cut away to a picture of this sweater on a little girl. I love how sassy she looks in this picture. Got my hat, got my mittens, got my sweater. This is uh, really cute, really fun to knit. The size range is insane. It goes from, well, ages one year old to seven years old. And I know that not all kids are the same size, and not all seven year olds are the same size. They actually do give measurements too. This video is sponsored by Lovecraft's Knitting, and we are using their Milamia Sweden Ultra Soft Merino yarn. And the yarn is held double throughout this whole sweater. This yarn comes in 32 colors and has an amazing twist on it, which is what is giving us all of the great stitch definition, because there are three different stitches used in this. There's a mistake rib down the front and the sleeves, the two by two rib in the, in the scarf, and then stockinette for the rest of it. Oh, and I should mention this scarf is attached, which from what I understand, if you're dressing a toddler, it's nice to have an attached scarf. Um, so I have three of the colors here. This yarn is machine washable. It says to dry flat, but I actually put mine in the dryer and this came out just fine. I dried it most of the way in the dryer. It came out just fine. It is really beautiful yarn, really nice to work with. If you want to get your copy of the pattern and uh, uh, a link to the yarn, just click the little eye in the upper right hand corner to go to my website. I'll have a link to the yarn, link to the pattern, and I will also put this information in the video description field below on YouTube. So 30 different colors, I gave you the range of sizes. I'm going to put this at an intermediate level. This is a, a pieced and seamed sweater, which isn't really that hard. If you are confident with knitting and purling and you are a careful reader of patterns, I think you can probably follow this if you're an advanced beginner. Um, you don't have to be an intermediate knitter is what I'm saying. This pattern is really, really well written. I'm super impressed with this pattern. They don't ever just leave you from, you know, step A, jumping over step B to step C, you know, thinking you'll, you know, assuming you'll have the, whatever step B is in there. They explain every single step in the pattern and give you stitch counts and all the different sizes are there. I am really super impressed with this pattern and the sweater is so cute. So, um, in this tutorial, I'm gonna run through um, the techniques used. You know, if you have to be able to knit and purl and work simple decreases and carefully read a pattern, but we're gonna run through the seaming and, cause there's a few different things going on and setting the sleeves and binding off stitches to shape the armholes. I'm gonna cover all of that here. So click the eye in the upper right hand corner to jump to my website to get everything you need and we'll get started on the sweater next. Okay, if you followed through to my website and you got your pattern and you ordered your yarn, we are ready to get started. I first want to um, show you the construction of the sweater and what it looks like close up. So let's take a look. Here we are with the little sweater. You see we've got the two by two rib scarf that is attached and then double breasted here. Nice wide button band, easy to do buttons. And this is knit in, in uh, well, five, five, six pieces really. There's one back, two fronts, two sleeves, and then the scarf, and then it's all seamed together. And we start at the bottom, and then we have gentle shaping up the sides, because it is a swing coat, it's wider on the bottom. And then we get to the armholes, and we do a lot of shaping. We're gonna do, focus a lot on the armholes, because if you've never, knit a sweater that's seamed in piece before, that's all gonna be new to you. And then the little cuffs here, you see the cuffs are so cute and folded up. If we unfold them, part of the mistake rib is inside out and the rest of it is right side out. And the reason for that is when it's folded, it's meant to be cuffed like that. Even if it slides down a little bit, you only see the right side of the ribbing. Just nice little details like that. And the pattern's so well written with all of these little details. So let's take a look at the pieces that we knit. So you'll start off with the back. You'll start off at the back bottom, gentle shaping on both sides, and then the armhole shaping, a little bit of shoulder shaping, and then we bind off. 
this being a little sweater, of course, it goes pretty quickly. And then you'll knit two of these fronts. We start at the bottom, again, gentle shaping to the armhole. If you've done any sewing, this looks exactly like a sewing piece, doesn't it? We have some neck shaping. And then we make a couple of sleeves. And this is the, the cuff with the ribbing inside and inside out and right side out. Okay. And I have this out to remind you to knit a swatch to make sure your gauge is spot on before you start knitting so that the sweater ends up being the right size, right? <laughs> okay. Actually, if you're knitting for a kid, they grow. So if, it, if it's a little bit big, I suppose it's not a disaster. So this sweater is knit with the yarn held double-stranded. And this yarn, like you've seen in all the pieces I've shown you, has such great stitch definition. Even held double-stranded, you can see how nicely the ribbing and the stockinette, how good everything looks. So knitting double-stranded is just like any other kind of knitting. You're just going to hold the yarn, the two, piece, the two strands of yarn together like they were just one strand of yarn. But the first thing I want to talk about is casting on a whole bunch of stitches because you're going to cast on a bunch of stitches, you know, for the, mostly just for the back bottom. And to make sure you have enough yarn if you're doing the long tail cast on, this is, this is how I like to do it. You take your needle, take your yarn, and wrap it, and each wrap is enough for one stitch. So usually what I'll do is, of course, count. I'm not counting now, but I'll count a quarter or half the number of stitches, total stitches that I need to cast on, and then mark that spot, and then double it, or quadruple it, whatever you need to do. Make your slip knot there, and then you'll, you know you'll have enough yarn for the cast on. Just a little trick I wanted to show you. I've demonstrated that in my videos before. So you'll be following the pattern. You'll do the, like I said, the pattern's so well written. You'll be following the pattern, and the first thing that gets tricky, if you haven't done it before, is the binding off that we'll do for this, the armhole shaping. And we're going to talk about this first, this right here. And actually, it happens on both sides, here and here. And this specifically is the pattern says, bind off four stitches at the beginning of the next two rows. So we have a right side row where we bind off four stitches, and then we turn the work, and we have a wrong side row where we bind off two, four stitches. So that's the first tricky bit, and I want to cover this so that it's clear. And I have this little sample that doesn't look anything like a sleeve, but we're going to pretend that my sleeve here says, bind off four stitches at the beginning of the next two rows. So. You're probably familiar with binding off, but let's talk about binding, counting bind off stitches. So for, you start by knitting two. We haven't bound anything off yet, so there's nothing to count yet. Pull that first stitch over the second one. I bound one off. That counts as one. Knit a stitch. That counts as two. That counts as three. That counts as four. So the point here is not to count the knit stitches you're working. Only count when you pull one stitch over the other. That's how we count bind off stitches. So I'll work across these. To get to the next row, which says bind off the first four stitches on the wrong side of the work. And this time, we're going to bind off purl wise and count bind off stitches. <laughs> so a couple things going on. First thing I'm going to do is purl two stitches. Doesn't count as any binding off. And then I put my working yarn behind the work just because it makes it easier and pull that second stitch over the first. That counts as one. Pull my yarn forward, purl a stitch, pull my yarn back, two, three, four. Again, don't count any of the purl stitches 
as part of the bind off, the only thing that matters is pulling the one stitch over the other to count as a bind off stitch. Okay, so there's that. The next thing I want to show you is something you'll have to do in the scarf, and it's another bind off technique, binding off in pattern. And I have a little bit of the scarf worked here. It is two by two rib, and this is what we're going to do to bind off in pattern, which gives us a nice stretchy bind off. Um, we look at our stitches. It's really helpful to be able to read your knitting when you're doing this part. And we see V's and we see bumps, right? The V's are knits and the bumps are pearls. And so we're starting here with two knit stitches, then two purl stitches, two knit stitches, two purl stitches. And I, you already knew that because I just said this is two by two rib. On the other side of the work, it starts with two purl stitches. Then you see the V's here, two knit stitches, two purl stitches. So you need to be, you can bind off on either side. It doesn't matter, but you need to know what you're starting with. And this is going to be two knit stitches. So I knit one knit two, bind off, yarn forward to purl one, bind off, yarn forward to purl one, bind off. And we're back to the knit stitches now. So knit one, bind off, knit one, bind off, we're back to purl stitches. So yarn forward to purl one, bind off. Okay, you just keep alternating knit a stitch, bind off, knit a stitch, bind off, purl a stitch, bind off, purl a stitch, bind off. And it gives you, you know, a normal looking bind off, but the stitches underneath will match the rest of the ribbing. And it gives you a nice stretchy bind off that will match the cast on. So that is binding off in two by two rib pattern. Let me see what else I have to sh show you. Swatch, casting on many stitches, binding off pearl wise. Kind of. We did all of that. Okay, that was a lot, that was a lot. You're going to cast on your stitches, knit your rib pattern, follow the instructions, and then I've shown you how to do the shaping for the armhole. Next up, we're going to cover um, seaming and knitting the picking up and knitting for the button bands. In this section, we're actually going to put the pieces together, button band, all that good stuff. If you've never done a seamed sweater before and this is new to you, the things that you learn in this sweater, a little example of a sweater, will apply to every other seamed sweater that you knit forever because all the, the techniques used are always the same. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, after you've finished your pieces, the first thing the pattern has you do is picking up and knitting along the front button band. Let me grab the sweater real quick so I can remind you what we're talking about. We're talking about this section here. You see the knitting goes this way, there's our front piece, but then the ribbing actually goes this way. So we're gonna pick up and knit stitches along the two fronts of the sweater. And this is the left front, and the pattern has us starting at the end of the neck shaping, or the bottom of the neck shaping. You can see the shaping here. And so it doesn't have to be exact, but I'm going to start picking up about, actually I'm going to use a double pointed needle for this so it's shorter. I'm going to start picking up at the bottom of the neck shaping. I'm going to hold the, the yarn double for this like we have been. And keep in mind that the stitches here are made up of the yarn held double. So you're looking for the V's on the end of the work and you might have to roll the work a little bit to get to that very edge V. Um, but the it's, it's double, so look for a V, but don't just pick up one strand of each. You're gonna wanna pick up the both strands there. So wrap the yarn and pull it through and then go into the next V and wrap that yarn, wrap the needle and pull it through and whoops, you know what? I'm not at the very edge V, easy enough. And I was just telling you, make sure you roll, roll it to make sure you're at the very edge. 
and then I guess I didn't do that myself. Also, I should mention that I did steam these pieces out a little bit before this video, and that's what I recommend doing before you start the button band, before you start seaming. The, we've got a little bit of curling going on here. Um, it's better than it was because I, I steamed it out. But of course, once it's all together, um, it won't roll once it's seamed up. Okay, under both Vs. And now when we think about this, knit stitches are squatty, right? Knit stitches are wider than they are tall. So this is, th we're looking at the length of the stitch here and the width of the stitch of, that we're picking up. So they're wider than they are tall. And this is like the visual that I always give myself to help myself remember. Because they're squatty, because they're wider than they are tall, we're going, if we keep picking up one for one, it's not going to balance up out. So we're going to pick up one, two, three. This is the formula that I always start with at least. Pick up one, two, three, then skip the next one and pick up the fourth. And that should give us more stitches, more space down here on the, 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 the height of the, the stitch the, uh, and fewer on the width of the stitch. And it should match up. But you can just keep watching how it goes. Um, let's just see how it goes. One, two, three, skip the next one, and knit four. One, two, three, skip the next one, and knit four. Let's see how it looks. That looks great. See, nothing's bunching up, nothing's pinching. If it was, I would adjust things a bit, maybe knit four and then skip one, see how that goes. But you do want it to look good. This is the front of the sweater. This is absolutely an important part of the sweater that's going to show. Um, but that's the formula I always start with is pick up one, two, three, skip one, and then knit one, pick up one, two, three, skip one, and then knit one. And usually it works. Usually that's a good combination for the the squattiness of the knit stitch. Okay, so that's picking up and knitting, and it's what you're going to do on both the button band and the button hole band. And you'll do that before you start seaming. And the next thing that the pattern has you do is to seam the shoulders. And let me get this in the frame here. I have the back piece Whoops, I'm trying to put it on the wrong side. I have the back piece and the front piece here, and you'll already have the button band on this. And this is how the whole thing comes together. It's easy to see because you're going to match up your, match up the armhole shaping. It comes together really nicely. We're gonna seam across the top here at the shoulder. And the shaping that we did at the top of the shoulder all matches up really well, so it's easy to see where you're going. So let's do the mattress stitch here. And you can hold the yarn single-stranded for the seaming if you like. I'm gonna go ahead and hold it double. So to get started, I am going to look at the Vs below the cast on. And I wanna put the needle through a V, actually going this way. It doesn't make a difference which way it's going, just be consistent. And then through that stitch again to secure it. And then jump over to this side and go through the V. My Vs are going this way. Under both legs, the V over there. Okay. So we're all set up. We're gonna jump back and forth, back and forth. And I like to keep things a little bit loose here at the be or while I'm working this so I can see where I'm going. Cause I wanna go into the same hole I came out of, go under both legs of the V, go into the same hole I came out of, under both legs of the V, back and forth. This is mattress stitch. This is the most common seam you will see in knitting. It's used for almost everything.
And after you do a few, you can have the magic moment of pulling the yarn and having it all come together. Look how nice, look how great that seam looks. And I want to get up to this shaping here because it's not really going to make a difference. You're just going to keep picking up both legs of the V regardless of what's happening up here. Just whatever is the, the next V. And when you're seaming, you tighten things up and you have a look. And if it doesn't look quite right, you undo a few stitches. I think that looks really good. Okay. That's the mattress stitch, and that's the seam that you're going to use on this whole sweater. We're seaming all of this together. And I just here finished the sh one of the shoulder seams. You see how quickly this went. This sweater does not take long to seam. Oh, that looks great, doesn't it? Okay. Now we're going to talk about the scariest part, which is setting the sleeves, right? Okay. So the sleeve fits here in the armhole shaping. That part's not hard to figure out. For this, I recommend having some little clippy markers like this. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to use a mattress stitch. Nothing really scary about it. And this pattern is so well written. The whole thing is going to come together really nicely. First, find the center of the top of the sleeve. And there's that. I'm going to match it up with the shoulder seam. So that's there. We know that. We know where that goes. And then I'm going to match up the underarm here and match up the underarm here. Okay, so those are for sure. We know exactly where those go. And then this is called easing in the sleeves. I'm going to match things up so that it looks good, it makes sense. Put a clip in there. You can readjust these clips between as you're seaming if you find that necessary, but you want to make sure that this one, this one, and the center one, that you're not readjusting those because the, the, those have to match up. And that sleeve popped in there really easily. Like I said, a well-written pattern is worth its weight in gold because that was great. And then you're going to seam just like we did at the shoulder. Um, actually, this I want to be sure to say this. When I'm seaming sleeves, I like to start at the top here and work my way down, and then at the top here and work my way down. You can work around, but to make sure that the center stays at the center and nothing moves, it's best to start twice, once going this way and once going this way. And then the sleeves popped in. And then the last bit of seaming that you'll have, almost the last bit of seaming, is this whole thing will be open from the cuff of the sleeve all the way down to the cuff of the, the bottom of the sweater. And you can do that in one long seam. Start at either the bottom of the sweater or the bottom of the cuff, all the way down. Okay, the last little bit I want to show, well, the last little bit of seaming will happen after you get the whole thing seamed together. The pattern has you working a couple of little rounds around the neckline just to kind of smooth things over before you attach the scarf. But this, with attaching the scarf, it's kind of like what we did with pick up and, the pickup and knit. This is the back of the neck here. This is the, the, the sleeve here. The pattern has you offset the scarf a little bit so it's longer on one side. Let me show that. 
let me get this in the frame here, it's longer on one side so that when you tie it, one side flops over the other and it matches up. Well, I could make it perfectly match up, but it gives you a little more to work with to tie the scarf around. So one side's a little bit longer than the other. It's really self-explanatory in the pattern. And you're going to seam, seam the sweater to the back neck and then around to the front. And just like we did with the pickup and knit, we have to keep in mind that stitches are squatty. So they are wider than they are, oh, this is the width, sorry, they are wider than they are long. And this is the visual that I do so I can remember. So you're going to want to, when you're seaming this, it's not always gonna match up one for one. You're going to pick up every stitch on the sweater and then because it's the, the length of the stitch is narrower, I recommend match up one, two, skip one on the scarf, or one, two, three, skip one on the scarf, and then match it up, match up the next one. So that's what you'll start with. It's just like, um, just like what we did when we were pick up and picking up to knit the front button band. Did the whole visual thing for you. Just skip every fourth stitch on the scarf, and that's how it will match up. And I think that's it. I'm looking at my notes to make sure. I don't know, I guess I thought it would take longer to do the, the seaming the shoulders, but we got through everything because mainly the knitting part's pretty easy. It's the construction of putting everything together afterwards that I wanted to make sure was really clear. Anyway, many thanks to Lovecraft Knitting for uh, sponsoring this and Milamia Yarns and their pattern. Beautiful yarns, such a well-written pattern. I can't wait to see this sweater on more kids. Enjoy the knitting, good luck.